Jason, what's good, man? Welcome to the EF Summit 2020. Dude, I appreciate you having me, man. I love what you're doing. I am yeah. honored to be a part of this, and uh, I'm excited to, to hopefully help a lot of people through these times. Absolutely. So people through these times, you are a person going through these times right now. How are you going through this time, you as a human being? Um, uh, like, if I'd be lying if I said that, and, and I think that a lot of people are going to be like, oh, this is amazing, and I'm great, and like, I, I am, but like I would also be lying if I said that like the extra amount of work isn't showing up in my life. Um, I very much set up my life to where I am responsible for a lot of other people. And, and I love that responsibility and I embrace that every single day. But obviously, um, I think one of the principles we're going to talk about is how fast the world just went to scale overnight. And so when you're working with a lot of people and all of a sudden those people went to scale overnight, your level of delivery also went to scale overnight. And so... Um, you know, it's, uh, it's amazing because I get to help some people through the hardest times of their life. Uh, I get to help them innovate and, and it's amazing. Like, honestly, like when I put my head down at the pillow at night, it's like, holy shit, like there's all these people that literally look at me as a leader and, and are listening. And it's like, there's amazing responsibility, but there's amazing gratitude. And, um, you know, both are, are showing up massively in my life every single day. So the, the short answer yeah. is I'm great. Uh, I'm a little tired, but I'm super humbled, super grateful, and uh, excited to continue doing what we do. What do you do? What, what does Jason Phillips do? You know, someone who is just catching you, you and your content for the first time. How are you helping people? Like pretty much you know, everybody. What, your, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Since nobody knows who I am. Um, uh, so I, like my, my day job, anyway, is I own, I founded and I own the Nutritional Coaching Institute, uh, and I'm the acting CEO of that company, and, and you know, we are serving a billion person mission. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know my backstory, like I was anorexic, I overcame that, I built a, a big one-on-one -on -one coaching business, I exited that, and I was like, man, now I gotta pay that forward, and, and I wanna impact a billion people, and so I wanna certify a million coaches, and I want to help each one of them um, ultimately become millionaires, but you know, help at least a thousand people um, through the vehicle of nutrition coaching. So that's the majority of it. Um, but also, I, I coach coaches from literally every industry. Um, like you know, the the art of coaching is why I was able to win. Taking that model and implementing it into the vehicle of nutrition coaching is what allows the coaching institute to be so successful. And now I'm taking that and I'm building elite level coaches in absolutely every industry. Um, with a model that most people would think is a little bit untraditional, um, but that's kind of how I roll. Like I, I like to reverse engineer things a lot differently, and my mind just works differently than most. So it does. I can attest to that. Um, <laughs> it, it is uh, that that shiny object syndrome on another level, but all with purpose and strategy. Speaking from experience, for sure. It's crazy. So speaking to the coaches out there, whether you're online, whether you're in person, you know what is. What is your biggest piece of advice for coaches out there right here, right now to show up for themselves, to show up for their business, to show up for their people, their audience, their clients? I think you said it in the right order um, and then probably not on purpose, but like show up for themselves, show up for their business and then show up for their clients. And I unfortunately, sometimes I, I sound smart. Doing things, yeah. I, th I think people are doing things the opposite way, though. I think people are trying to show up for their clients first, then their business then themselves. And. And I actually think that's the problem more so than the solution. Um, and, and so one of the things I've been telling everybody in this crazy time is, especially coaches, what you're, what you're experiencing right now is just its scale of whatever you were doing before. And so there was a lot of people out there that were like coaches or, or business owners, and I'm going to use that term very loosely, um, that, were, that were chasing clients. They're like, all I need is more clients because more clients is more revenue. And if I have more revenue, I can build my business. And if I build my business, I can build myself, right? Like that's the order and the dichotomy by which they, mm -hmm. they operate. Um, and so instantly overnight you go to scale. And, and so your pursuit of clients before instantly became like your peak level of importance, right? And so all of a sudden in an area where the clients became more obsolete, because they were obsolete before, right? Coaching spaces are crowded. Now they're more obsolete you're still actively trying to get clients, yet your importance went from down here because you were still getting by, you're paying your bills, people were still paying you, right? You didn't have cancellation. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. all of a sudden at scale, that level of importance just went exponentially higher. And so you're freaking out even more than you were before that you're not getting clients. And so I actually think if we reverse engineer and we do exactly what you said, we focus on ourselves, we focus on our business, we focus on our clients, right? What is it that we even want in the first place? And, and obviously like that's, that's a very cliche statement, but I think you have to go like 10 layers deep. Like 
not only like what is the impact you want to have, but how do you want to be helping people? Who do you want to be helping? Like, what are you actually best at? Like, if we could all as coaches drop the ego and say, like, this is what I'm really good at, but more importantly, this is what I suck at, right? And and inside of like, this is what I suck at, hey, here's a handful of other professionals that would be very good at helping you with those things so that I can live in my scope of genius with you, right? And and I've had those awakenings in my business for sure. Um, but once you once you really like dial that in, when you're like crystal clear and you're like, okay, this is where I want to be, this is what I want to be doing, um, now all of a sudden you say, all right, like what is the framework by which I'm going to operate inside of a business to create scale? Like where do I actually need help? Because none of us are equipped to do absolutely everything. I hate admin stuff, mm-hmm. I hate back end stuff, and so I outsource absolutely everything. Um, and so then you can put that there. Well, at, only at that point can you actually deliver to a client. Right. If you're still trying to figure your own shit out, if you're still running around like a chicken with your head cut off and figuring out like, like, what is my message? What is my framework? Like, what's my vehicle of delivery? Like, holy shit, who's paying my bills? Who's doing like, who's doing my scheduling? Like, what are my funnels? What are my advertising? Like, if you're still trying to figure all those things out, like you have not maximized yourself as a person. Right. And so therefore, the delivery that you're giving is less than 100 percent of yourself, not on purpose. Right. And no coach does that on purpose. No coach would ever would ever intentionally under deliver. Um, but I think if they take a step back and they're like, all right, in this time right now, we have a moment to get crystal clear. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think that the best thing we can all walk away from this with is that piece of clarity. And now for some people though, like I'm, I'm going to caution because this isn't a feel good story, right? This isn't like <laughs> you're going to walk away with clarity and everything is going to be okay. Like it doesn't work like that <laughs> because a lot of times when you get clarity, it requires a couple steps backwards to take the requisite steps forward. And, and that's what I think is going to scare a lot of people. Um, yeah, I like agree. Full transparency inside of this time for me, I've realized there's a segment of my business where I'm like, I kind of need to cut the head off and mm. it generates half a million dollars. Right. Powerful so to, realization to, to, to sit here inside of clarity and be like, I need to walk away from half a million dollars. That's scary. But I also know like in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to live inside the truth of, because that's like number one rule for every coach to tell the fucking truth. Right. Sure. And I'm going to live inside that truth and inside of like taking those two steps backward, I know I can produce way more than half a million dollars and probably inside of three months. And it's like, so that, that's a very scary play, but it's congruent with where I want to be in the long term. And I think any coach that can like really go and like look themselves in the mirror and have that clarity and more important, back that clarity with confidence and conviction to say, this is who I am. These are the skills that I can bring mm-hmm. to the world. And like, n- no matter what the short-term ramifications are, the long-term outcomes are worth it. And, and like that level of solace and sovereignty will carry anyone to any place. I agree, man. Sometimes when you do make room for more, and that means letting something go, letting you know a part of your business go, do it strategically. Do it with kind of like the clarity of, hey, this is what I'm going to build in its place, and yeah. it's going to be tenfold. Absolutely. Yeah, like don't don't just go look in the mirror and be yeah. like, well, I don't like being on fucking calls, <laughs> so fuck coaching. Like that's out of the way. Like, oh, by the way, they're like all my revenue left, and I got nothing else to hang my hat on. Like that's not a good idea. Um, yeah, let's. But, yeah, like, I, I love the concept of burn the boats, but you know, know at least where you're advancing, right? <laughs> at least know there's an island that you're gonna. Yeah. Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, in the so, coaching space, man, would you say right now should people be focusing on maintaining, holding the line? Should it be looking for for growth? I mean, what is really possible right now? What is realistic? Well, I, I think we're facing two pandemics in the world. Number one is the coronavirus. Um, number two is fear. And mm. so, while as coaches we cannot directly address the coronavirus, we absolutely can address fear. And mm. so, I think that the one thing that you should be doing to hold down yourself and your business is just being a leader and reaching out and being that like rock for your clients. And so like, what does that involve? How do you, how do you practically execute on being a leader? Well, number one, like don't pivot your business a hundred different ways, mm. right? So like, like the, the experts are coming out and they're like, oh, we'll do this and do that and do this. And like, the thing is like when people see you making change and not creating like forward movement, cause we all know there's a difference between lateral change and forward movement. Absolutely. Yeah. When your clients see you make lateral change, they know that you're affected too. And they no longer are positioning you as this leader. They're mm-hmm. like, Oh, we're all on the same level. And so now the departure becomes very simple. Mm-hmm. Like you, you were a military guy and mm-hmm. 
so inside of the military, I don't, I've, I've never have been in the military, but I have to assume that like in some sort of like training exercises, you love to hate your lieutenant and sergeants and all those people, oh. right? Like they're dickheads. And oh, absolutely. You. It's, it's a love hate for sure. But here's the thing. The minute you go into battle, they start leading you. And there's an unwavering confidence as to like the decisions and the directions that are going to be made. And mm. you don't think twice about whether or not to follow that individual. Right. All, all Absolutely not. Inside. And, and I, I look at life as that same way right now. Like we're in the battlefield. Right. Mm. Prior to this, like, you're, you know, your clients had a decision. The marketplace is pretty crowded. But right now, like we're in battle. And if you're showing up as that leader that they hired on day one, they're not going anywhere. And so exactly. I think that like the, the strongest way to hold the line is be the leader, instill confidence. Like, and that all goes back to like self, business, and clients. Create confidence inside of yourself first, right? Go to your employees and build confidence so that your whole team and your whole business is showing up in the marketplace as what it is, right? A very confident and well-backed entity. Yeah. And all of a sudden your clients fall in suit and you guys go to war right as one giant entity and nobody's going anywhere and i think that is the single biggest thing like there are positions whether you're a brick and mortar business whether you're a digital business there are opportunities right now mm. in every industry to lead and that is the single biggest opportunity you should be the, like like one thing you're doing phenomenally well with this summit is you are connecting the leaders in every single industry and so all of a sudden every person that ever needs help beyond this is going to come to chase tuning and be like chase is a leader right now, maybe you do, maybe you don't know how you'd ever monetize that, how you would ever use that, but the positioning is there. Well, if you're a brick and mortar space, pull other local brick and mortar spaces together. Exactly. Right? Be the leader of a cause. If you're a digital business, go help other digital businesses. Go help something bigger than you. Go help a charity. Go help some other people's like local causes. Because by paying it forward, you instantly become that leader. Help other people like right now. Do not drop your service. Mm -hmm. So if you can lead and you can continue carrying on your service, you're going to come out of this 100% clear. 100% agree. And you hit on a point there that I wanted to ask you about. And I can ask you this question because I've known you for several years. Yeah. Acting out of or rather working out of growth mindset, abolishing the scarcity mindset. I'm talking specifically going to other coaches, going to other businesses. Let's mm -hmm. talk the B2B aspect here why is that even i would say even more important from business survival standpoint now more than ever of reaching out to other coaches coming together and supporting each other instead of you know oh no we're in the same industry you know i don't want to share my kind of secret sauce well first of all i mean and this could be like a deep rabbit hole and i know we don't have a time yeah to yeah it would take you into a super deep rabbit hole but I, I have a belief that like successful coaching businesses are backed on three core principles. Um, the first is mastery of self, which we've talked extensively about. The second is mastery yeah. of connection. The third is mastery of marketplace. So inside of mastery of connection, you have to know how to connect to other businesses. Because by the way, like most businesses aren't your competitors, they're your complement. And Amen, brother. you have to shift that mindset to realize it's all complement. First of all, uh, unless you're like Amazon or unless you're like, you know, one of these huge companies, you don't have the infrastructure to serve every potential client that is inside of your market. Mm -hmm. And second of all, if you're trying to serve every customer that's in your marketplace, that means that you really don't truly understand your business. You don't truly mm -hmm. understand what your product is. You don't understand who it best serves and who it best does not serve, right? Because at the end of the day, you have to know who shouldn't be buying from you. And you should mm -hmm. actively be trying to repel those people. Because if you have a very close-knit tribe of the right people, they are going to continue to be your advertising. They are going to continue to be your marketing. And like I said earlier, I need to walk away from half a million dollars in my revenue. Those are the wrong clients, right? Mm. I need to hold tight maybe two, three hundred grand in my business. But if I hold that really tight and I over-deliver to them, they'll start bringing in other people that fit that same mold without me having to go out and market and advertise. And so it's an ego thing. And mm -hmm. I get it because when you first get into, when you first get into any industry, there's a scarcity mindset to some degree, right? And I don't, I don't care if you're Tony Robbins, like you come in and you've got this perfect mindset. There's a little human bit of nature sets in. Of like, Absolutely. Hey, yeah. I, I need to produce, I need to protect. Right. And, and at the end of the day, the faster you can get through that, the better. Now production and protection should not come in competition. 
production and protection is a self competition. Am I producing the right amount of leads? Am mm -hmm. I producing the right amount of content? Am I producing the right conversations? Right? Not am I producing relative to somebody else? Am I protecting myself? Am I protecting my family? Am I protecting the things that are important to me? Am I protecting my coworkers, my, my business place, my business, my clients? Not am I protecting against other businesses, right? The battle does not come from other businesses. Nobody's trying to pick you off. Nobody's trying to like, you know, like limit your growth. I promise you, everybody is in their own lane, focusing on their own fires, like doing their own shit. And, and after having led literally thousands of businesses at this point, I can tell you that's the case. Like I have, <laughs> I have not gotten on one call with a business owner where they were like, you know what? Fuck that business. I really want to take them out today. Like, it just doesn't happen. Yeah, um, it's gone, man. And you're just not that important, right? Like true, even though true. we all have this ego. Yeah. <laughs> that person's targeting me. Like they're not targeting you. Um, they probably don't even know who you are. Let's be honest. No, facts. Um, so, you know, it's... Um, I think we all have the ego that like, you know, we desire that to be like the case. But at the end of the day, man, like uh, the more you're giving attention to other people, the less you're giving attention to where it needs to be, which is your own business and yourself. And so just, you know, be better. Right. At the end of yep. the day, it's just a simple function of, of becoming better. Uh, I actually, I talked about it on social media today. I'm, I know it won't be relevant to like when this airs, but when we're recording this, mm -hmm. I said, you know, like what you need is not like, another sales funnel, a new sales script, like a, a new lead gen, like, like you don't need those things. Like you simply need to be better, right? Like it starts and ends with you. Like the, the best coaches I know, right? Every single coach I know that is million dollars plus can go look in the mirror and say success starts and ends with me. It has nothing like, because listen, if you suck right now, right? Like if you suck shit, I don't care if I give you a funnel, like, like a million dollar funnel guaranteed to produce a million dollars, you will fuck it up because you suck, right? If I give you a million dollar sales script, guaranteed to produce a million dollars, and I and, and I give it to you in your current state, you're gonna fuck it up because you suck. But if you do the work to where no matter what I give you, you can implement, all of a sudden the tools start showing up. And because you've been ready for the tools to appear, you're gonna be great. Right? And and Absolutely, that's, man. that's really what it comes down to. I I mean, dude, I, I don't like I don't know what sports you played growing up. I played golf and like in, in my baseball and lacrosse. That's me. Yeah. Early in my golf career, I, I was the shithead that was like, I blamed it on the equipment. And I was like, oh, well, the reason I suck is because I don't have that $500 yeah. driver. And if I didn't have the big Bertha, you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and if you gave me the big Bertha, guess what? I still fucking hit it three fairways over or I still topped it. Right. It didn't matter. It was me. And as I got better, you could put any stick in my hand and I'd, you know, kick your ass. And, and it all came back to self-improvement. And so, yeah, yeah. again, that's why my three-stage process of mastery of self, mastery of connection, and then, like, the marketplace is last. Like, it, and if you and your connections are good, man, like, I can give you all the tactics in the world, and they will amplify your business very, very quickly. But if, if you haven't mastered the first two, any business tactic I give you is going to be completely wrong. And this is my whole problem with the guru space, mm -hmm. as it is, right? Um, I agree sales funnels work. I agree sales scripts work. But I also agree people put them to work. And if you're a shitty person and you don't have your shit together, then you're not going to work, right? They're not going to work. Yeah. And so the prerequisite is the person has to be developed. And so my big focus like inside of this and coming out of this is I'm going to build people that can implement at the highest level and just smash it inside of coaching because um, I already have the framework built up for that. And once you're an epic person, we'll fucking do everything. He does. He does have the framework. I can tell you all speaking personally from years of just <laughs> knowing you as, as a human being, uh, a friend, a colleague, a mentor, you know, and, and a coach. It, it, it all is the, the walk is there. The talk is there. The walk is there. Um, and I'll, I'll end here, Jason, with kind of something you said that I think is very powerful. And success does start and end with us, regardless of the business strategy, regardless of the connection, regardless of a pandemic going on in the world if we square ourselves away, then everything else after that, I won't say becomes easy, but it becomes easier because we don't have to constantly adapt and change who we are and our business approach to the world. We show up the same way and that takes a daily practice. So success starts and ends with us. Someone wants to start on themselves today. They want to start building success for themselves today and possibly their business. What are they doing right here? What's your biggest, Hey, hey leave this webinar, leave this experience and go do this. Go look in the mirror and tell that motherfucker the truth mm. and, and understand that likely what you've been telling that motherfucker up until right now is a bunch of lies, <laughs> right? You've been lying that you're not good yeah. enough because the truth is you're not working hard enough. 
you've been lying that your your connections with other people suck yet you haven't fostered them right you've you've been lying that your business isn't working when reality is you're just searching for more tactics to make it work instead of you making it work and so like step one right now go look in the mirror and tell that fucking person the truth and the truth is a scary fucking place right it is a scary fucking place but if you can do it if you can accept that truth and you can understand that the way to every ounce of success starts like in this, like, like we're all starting here in truth. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like we're all starting in the bottom. And, and if you can understand that that is the starting point for each and every human being, and that if you don't start there at some point, you're going to be pulled back there. You might as well go there now and start because you're going to be way ahead of everybody else. I can tell you it is only scary in the beginning. And as your story and as the timeline of your success and you as a human, you as your business grows, you will revisit scary times because your truth and who you are needs to evolve and grow. But I can promise you it's only scary in the beginning. After that, it becomes the most liberating, freeing, unscary thing in the world. So well said, man. Thank you so much. Um, everybody's going to know where to find you. But, you know, real quick, you know, again, if they miss it in the beginning, Nutritional Coaching Institute, Jason Phillips, like where you're hanging out the most online, where can they connect with you more after this? Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, ncicertifications.com is, is ours. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Jason Phillips is Nutrition. Um, probably the two best places. Send me a DM. Um, I'm on Facebook a lot, too. But, um, yeah, any of those places, man, at the end of the day, I try to answer as many questions as I can whenever they come in. So just hit me up, and I'll do what I can for you. Awesome. Jay, it's been great having you on, man. Thank you so much for your time. Dude, of course. I appreciate your time always.